Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to look at another match for the title game between Rashid Nesmetnov and Vladas Mikenas, played in the year 1948. And this is where Nesmetnov was bidding to get a title of master against a titled opponent. And in this game Nesmetnov was playing with the white pieces, Mikenas was playing with black. And as I've said in the previous video, Nesmetnov actually really studied very hard for a previous opponent that he was due to play, but then Mikenas was put in against Nesmetnov last minute change and Nesmetnov had to book up against the Alakine defence which he found in a little article. So eventually during the match Nesmetnov was prepared for the Alakine's defence and he managed to scupper Mekanis' first try in the first game and this is game number 11 and we get into another Alakine with e4, Mekanis plays knight to f6, Nesmetnov plays e5 attacking the knight on f6, the knight goes to d5 and Nesmetnov plays c4, attacking the knight once again, which jumps in to b6, and Nesmetnov still chases this knight around with c5. And the knight has to move once again, the only square is knight to d5, and white now plays bishop c4, attacking the knight once again. So this is known as the chase variation, and Mikenov's now played e6 to defend the knight, and also get their bishop out to hit this c5 pawn. And there's been not developed another piece with knight to c3. So now two pieces are ganging up on this knight on d5. I believe the best move for black here is to take this knight off on c3. With knight takes c3 and then d takes c3 followed by bishop takes c5. Uh, but white has ideas of queen g4 though, attacking this pawn. If black castles into this, I think this would be devastating due to bishop h6. Um, so black should probably play moves like g6 here. White can continue with knight to f3, and if knight c6, white has ambitions of attacking this king side with, let's say, h4. So white's given up a pawn in this opening uh, for good positional advantage and development. Bishop takes c5 is also an interesting idea. Again, white can play queen g4, attacking this pawn. Um, black can castle this time because the bishop can't jump into h6, but white can play d4. And black should actually play f5 here, attacking the queen, which I ran for an engine, and Stockfish gave queen g3 as the best move. And black does have to be a bit careful. Uh, the engine, Stockfish says f4 is the best move for black here, but black has to be careful because if bishop takes d4, thinking they're going to win another pawn, white can play takes on d5, and if e takes d5, play bishop takes with check, and if king h8, play knight to f3. And all of a sudden white's got an attack emerging with knight g5 ideas and attacking this f7 square with the bishop. Also this knight attacking the bishop which has to move to b6 and then white can play let's say knight g5 and has an interesting game. However if we go back to this position in the game after knight c3 by Nesmetnov, Mikenas played the move d6 instead. Now it's perfectly acceptable for white just to take this pawn off with takes takes and play knight to f3, knight c6. This is a very drawish position. Nesmetnov decided to take the knight off on d5, so played knight takes d5, black recaptured, and Nesmetnov recaptured again with bishop takes d5. And it's a very crafty move this, because if black now takes one of these pawns off, let's say d takes e5, then queen b3, and there's no way for black to really defend this f7 square, and also try and defend this b7 square at the same time. For instance, queen e7, then white can just take this b7 pawn. And if bishop takes c5 here, which is considered the best move, then bishop takes f7, and then the king's forced to f8, and black's lost casting rights, and white's in the driving seat. Again, similarly, if black takes a c5 pawn, d takes c5, we can play queen to b3 again, attacking um, b7, and also f7. If bishop b6, then takes takes, and queen takes b7 at the end of it, queen to d5, and then queen takes d5, takes an f4. And white's got a great position with a solid center and a pawn up. So McKinnis didn't take either pawn. He actually played the move c6 first, attacking this bishop on d5. And Nesmetnov now is the one who has to be careful because if bishop b3 dropping the bishop back, black can play d takes e5. And all of a sudden this is great position for black to be in. They've got a nice center pawn. The bishop's going to take the c5 pawn. Um, it's easy pickings for black to be honest. They've got a very nice position. Similarly, if bishop c4, black can play d5, shut out the bishop and attack the c5 square. So after c6 by Mikenas, Nesmetnov now decided to sacrifice the bishop, 
Bishop takes f7 with check, and the king recaptured. Nesmetov now played c takes d6. So, why did Nesmetov sacrifice the bishop? The bishop is worth roughly three points, and Nesmetov actually has three pawns for the bishop. We've got two centre pawns here, and an extra d pawn in the centre as well. So, it's debatable whether these three pawns are worth the bishop, uh, but time will soon tell. But interestingly, both sides have to be really accurate here, otherwise either one could end up in a lot of trouble. For instance, in previous games, bishop e6 is usually played by black here, and mistakes can be made. So white has previously played f4 in this position, which is actually not a good move, because then, because black can give back the bishop with bishop takes d6, e takes d6, and all of a sudden after rook e8, black's the one in the driving seat, they're going to win the pawn back on d6, uh, and there's a discovered attack on the king if this bishop moves the black. So if black does play bishop e6 here, white should play knight h3, and if bishop takes d6 now, there's a queen f3 check, king g8, and white should play knight to f4, attacking the bishop on e6. If bishop d5, knight takes, bishop takes e5, and then knight c3. Um, and we're in this position where white's a pawn up, um, so white is definitely better here, and black's got a terrible king on g8 and has lost casting rights. So it's going to take black a few moves to sort that out. But bishop e6 was an interesting idea for black. However, Mekenas has seen previous games like this, and he decides to play queen e8 instead, attacking the 5 pawn. Maybe even preparing to play bishop takes d6 as well, because the e pawn is pinned. So Nesmetov's next move, queen e2, makes a lot of sense, because it stops the pin on the e-file. Queen f3 was also possible with check. If king g8, then just play queen to e3. And again, the white queen blocks this pin from the black queen. If play continues, bishop e6, white could play knight e2, knight d7, and d4. And we're into a very intriguing middle game, where white's piece down, but has these three pawns in the centre for the bishop. But as I say, after queen e8, Nesmet not to play queen to e2, still a good move. And now c5 by black. So what black's trying to do is scupper white's chances of playing d4 and supporting this e5 pawn. However, I think white should play queen to e3 here, attacking the pawn on c5, and the best move actually for black is bishop takes d6, e takes d6, queen takes e3, and f takes c3, rook d8. Um, and after b3, rook takes d6 and knight to f3, again white emerges a solid pawn up, and we're into a late middle game. So white definitely has the advantage. Queen e3 was definitely possible then in this position. But Nesmetnov played knight to f3, developing, but still protecting this e5 pawn with the knight. But I think this was a mistake because it allows black to play bishop takes d6. And why is this so good now? Well, the point is that if e takes d6, black can play queen takes e2 with check. If the king recaptures, black has rook e8 with check, king d1, and bishop g4. And Nesmetnov said in his book they thought this looks really bad for white, to be honest. However, after analysing this with an engine, it actually emerged that white should play d4 here. If black takes the knight, g takes, and then c takes d4, white can play bishop f4. Okay, white's got double death pawns, uh, but there's still actually a pawn up in this uh, end game. And I guess eventually white will be able to maybe win this d4 pawn if they hurry up and get the king into action, and maybe some of the rooks on the c file. So this is actually given as quite equal for both sides, with white having a slight edge due to the extra pawn. So Nesmetnov shouldn't really allow this bishop takes d6. So instead of taking back though, he played knight g5, because he didn't like the previous variation. So they've checked the king anyway. Mikenas moved his king to g6. And Nesmetnov now goes in for some sort of kill with queen to d3 check. King takes g5, and now queen takes d6. In his book, he actually said why it succeeded in complicating the game. So this must have been his ambition from the start. After queen takes d6, it looks very unbalanced for both sides. Here Stockfish actually gives this as winning for black, but if we look at the board, it's very hard to assess for a human player. If I'm playing black here, I think my king looks very precarious. If white managed to get a d4 move in here, unleashing the bishop, I think black's in a lot of trouble. Saying that though, the, um, the simplest variation to win for black here should just be to play queen c6. If d4 with check from the bishop, king h5, queen takes c6, knight takes c6, d takes c5, knight takes and castles. This is actually good for black because 
Okay, white's still actually a whole piece down. They've got two pawns for the piece. Um, but any good player should be able to win this for black, to be honest. I would probably reroute my bishop to c6. And just put my rooks into the centre. Um, and I feel like I've got a good position as black here, even though white is two pawns for the piece. Knight c6 here was also reasonable. After d4, there's king h5. h3, maybe. d takes c5. Queen takes d6. Takes and rookie a check. And bishop to e3. Again, though, here, white is actually still three solid pawns up for the piece. So it's not as good as the previous variation that we just looked at. So yeah, queen c6 was definitely the best move in this position. Um, but McKenna's played actually a very bad move, queen d8. Trying to trade queens off. Uh, but the problem with this move is that now white can play d4 with check. And all of a sudden, black's king's in a bit of trouble. If it goes king h5, then white can continue with queen takes c5. If bishop e6, white should castle. After knight c6, there's bishop e3 to protect the pawn. Um, and black can play queen d5. And it's already looking very complicated. If I run this through Stockfish, they've actually found a good drawing variation for white here. White should play queen c2 and all of a sudden try and cut off this king from safety. If rook a c8, there's f3, preparing g4 check. If g5, to give the king a safety square. White can play g4 with check. And after king h6, play a sacrifice. Bishop takes g5 with check. If king takes, then play h4. The king can't take this h4 pawn because then queen h2 leads to mate. For instance, king g5, queen check, king f4, queen h6. King to g3 and queen h2 is mate. So after h4, king h6 should be played and then there's queen d2. After the king goes to g6, there's a perpetual check with queen g5, king f7 and queen f6. The point is the queen's attacking the rook and checking the king at the same time. The king's forced to g8 to protect the rook, and then there's queen g5 check, king f8, queen f6 again, king g8 and queen g5, perpetual check. So maybe after d4 check, black should have played king h5 because it leads to a drawn variation. However, McKenna decided to play king f5 instead, and Nesmetnov just continued his attack though with g4 with check. I think king takes would be suicidal because then rook g1, and if king h3, there's queen takes c5. With queen c3 and bishop g5 ideas coming. And if king h5 after rook g1, there's queen takes c5 still with e6 ideas with check. If h6, there's e6 with check. g5, e7. Queen g8, bishop e3, bishop d7. Well, I can get queen. And if takes, there's h4 at the end. Bishop c6 takes queen d5 and then queen c2. And this is actually a one position for white. Believe it or not, there's actually like a mate in 16 here for white. The king is just so open for black. And black's still got a few pieces trapped in the corner that they've not developed yet. So I think with good play, white should be able to win this quite easily. For instance, black can't even take this pawn on g5 because then rook will take it. And white will win a queen. So yeah, black's got a lot of issues here. But after g4 check in the game... Mikenas put his king onto e4 in the centre. And again, this looks very scary for black. There's better have continued with queen takes c5. The idea is to play f3 next move and get the king one step closer to a mating net. Rook f8 was played. Castles by Nesmetinov. And Mikenas actually played king to f3 here. If queen takes d4, I think white wins due to rook e1 check. And there's nowhere for the king to go to continue to protect this queen. If king d3, then there's rook d1 with check. King e4 and rook takes. So that's game over. And after king f3 by Mikenas, um, this looks very precarious for the black king. Okay, they're attacking this g4 pawn, so there's a of defense with h3. b6 was played attacking the queen, but now the queen just jumps in to c3. The king went to e4, and now there's queen c4. And here actually Mikenas resigned the game. The point is Nesmetnov's preparing to play rook e1 with check. For instance, if bishop b7, there'd be rook e1 with check, king f3, and queen e2 would be checkmate. So this was the final position, and Nesmetnov played another blind of the game against Mikenas, um, and absolutely destroyed his Alakhan's defence. 
This is actually a really complicated game with a lot of variations that I didn't actually discuss. So if you ever want to go through it, I copied the game in the description below. So just copy that into chess base and it should just work and you should be able to look at my notes as well. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick analysis of this game. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the videos to come. Goodbye for now.